they, they are letting the, the exchange rate fluctuate and the fluctuate elbow to, to six highs and they are reducing the interest rates. So for the high net worth individuals, there's no incentive to keep their money in Brazil at all. I mean, it's the exposure, the risk, the politics, and, and it's not anymore an income play that you can put your money to sleep on fixed income instruments in Brazil and you have a really good return. Now the returns are very comparable to what kind of return you can have in the US. So I think for a real hard asset investment opportunities in the US, you would create a new opportunity for those individuals that are gonna fly that capital out of Brazil because there's no, there's no simply no incentive. <laughs>
they built the Villaggio, which was kind of a very interesting building, high-end condo, one of the very first in Miami. Really changed the landscape, Alumus Park, South Beach. And the plan was to diversify again. Again, Brazil was going in a new political crisis with the left-wing party leaving uh, the, the, the command and the impeachment and all that. So it was a good opportunity to, to invest, multi-plan at that point, a much larger company with a financial backing to really expand in a much different way. And, and Fifth Seven Ocean presented as a unique flagship opportunity for us to resume an operation here. And it was very fortunate to, to come to really help Mr. Pat, who's the founder and CEO of Multiplan, to really build a new venture here, build a new platform, structure a team. We had that, that amazing project to begin with and, and continue on pursuing opportunities in South Florida. So a little background and a little history. No, that's, that's awesome, man. I, you know, the, it's funny. What I love most about everything you said, and I love the professional background and, and taking the risk and bouncing around because you need to do that. I, yeah. I never knew you were an athlete. What, uh, what distance did you swim and what, and what type of style did you swim? Yeah, I was a sprinter, so uh, 53 was my main event, and I would do the 100, but 53 was my main event that would really um, made me uh, I mean, a good athlete, I think. Yeah, no, that's, that's people, I don't think people realize just how hard swimming is. I, I do triathlons, and it's definitely not a sprint, it's no. long distance, but I, I have a, ever since I got into triathlons, I have a whole newfound yeah. respect for swimming. It's, it's unbelievable. It's hard. So that's awesome, but I'm, I'm, happy, to, I'm happy to hear yeah. that. Yeah. Now we talked a lot about. Go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Uh, no, no. I do agree with you. My my kids are all in very competitive sports, and and I look forward. And I played competitive sports growing up. I do think you're right that that it does add a certain amount of discipline and firepower yeah. to how we operate as as professionals in our professional career. You know. Yeah. Another percent, especially that swimming is, is a sport that's very challenging, not only physically, right, in terms of the amount of word they need to put in place to prepare yourself for most sports you prepare for season in swimming for the most part you prepare for a swim meet right and and in 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 the amount of work behind the scenes you know it's very individual work right to to be, to, to learn how to self-motivate to to set up your goals and, and pursue your goals and this is mentally challenging a lot you know to sustain those long cycle preparation cycles and face up uh, your key moment with well, you need so, to perform. You are in the center stage, and yeah. there's not much other chance to, to recover. So, and, and I'll tell you, and, and now technology has changed a little bit. Back in the day, when at least when I started racing triathlons, which was 10 years ago, and definitely you when you were in college, we didn't have earphones that we could put in our ears when we're swimming, you know, for long distances. So you hear nothing. It's literally just you and your thoughts as you're in the yeah. pool, right? Uh, now, so, so it's interesting. So Multiplan is the largest developer in Brazil. Granted, not necessarily residential, but residential malls, all that stuff. Brazil right now, the Real, when I checked last night, was 5.7 to 1. Um, as you know, when we first met at, uh, at the event for Hot Living, uh, I told you my wife is from, uh, she's Carioca, she's from Rio. Um, right. And we're hearing from her family that really right now is when coronavirus is, is getting a foot, you know, getting a hold of, of Brazil. How do you foresee the Brazilian market, with the Real so high, coronavirus really getting in there now, how do you foresee the Brazilian market playing a role for the remainder of Miami, in, for the remainder of 2020 in Miami real estate? And then let's just talk about Brazil, and then we'll talk about the rest of Latin America after that. Yeah. Well, I think it's a quite challenging time for Brazil at the moment. I mean, we have been suffering for the past, I can say, probably four years when we're about to grow into a new cycle with the, some of the initial reforms were, take, were taking place, right? We were able to approve the pension fund reform, which was a major cornerstone reform that never has been achieved. So we were, we started to feel that Brazil was the right track to grow. I mean, when you look at the numbers, last quarter, last year in 2019, you saw some significant improvement on all metrics, a new investment coming in, and, and the coronavirus really had a major implication, not only the economic impact and the health impact, I mean, uh, in the first place, but the economic impact was devastating because uh, the resources that a country like Brazil has to really put into place, I mean, to safeguard the individuals that are losing their jobs, they're not there, right? They already have like a large public deficit, so there's no way or means to really finance that for a long period of time i mean and, and on top of that we are facing a very 
uh, complicated political crisis. Uh, Brazil is a federation, right? And the federal government should be uh, uh, the command on what actions and how to have a coordinated effort on how to transition through this period, right? In similar as we see here in how to organize a plan and, and, and define the, the political measures or, or the, the, the guidelines. I mean, and we don't have them in, in, in place that now. So the amount of uncertainty, the amount of, uh, of concerns uh, is really concerning in terms of what to see, what is the future right now. Uh, I mean, does that, does that uncertainty take the high net worth individuals? Of, I mean, a lot of them are already here anyways. But for the ones that maybe were on the fence uh, between, uh, you know, deciding whether they were going to invest in South Florida real estate, do you think this pushes them over the edge to want to come now? A hundred percent, because what's happening now, the interest rate, I mean, the, 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 the economy has shifted gears, right? So in the past, the key lever for the finance minister or the, the monetary policy in Brazil was to control the exchange rate. So even the exchange rate of 4.5 reais, that's what it was about yep. the time we last met, we always felt that was a little appreciated, right? That we always felt that as the reform would go in place, this dollar will go back to even below 4, 3.75, 3.8. That's where we thought the equilibrium were. And at that moment, like, you create more purchasing power for the individuals to come and sure. continue to buy here, right? Especially... I think it's the middle market, right? Not the very high, high-end market where we play, but for that second layer of consumers, I think makes a big difference yeah. if the dollar really were depreciated. And I think now it's different. I mean, they, they are letting the, the exchange rate fluctuate and it fluctuate out about to, to six highs and they are reducing the interest rates. So for the high net worth individuals, there's no incentive to keep their money in Brazil at all. I mean, with the exposure, the risk, the politics, and, and it's not any more an income play that you can put your money to sleep on fixed income instruments in Brazil and you have a really good return. Now the returns are very comparable to what kind of return you can have in the U.S. So I think for a real hard asset investment opportunities in the U.S., you would create a new opportunity for those individuals that are going to fly that capital out of Brazil because there's no, there's no simply no incentive. And, and I think it will take a while for us to figure out our way out of this crisis and, and have a clear understanding of the impact of the corona on the economy to really invest in Brazil and maybe ship those investments down here. That's awesome. I love it. That, I, I love to hear that not only from a, from a real estate perspective, but just a general economic perspective for, for South Florida. So how about the rest of Latin America outside of Brazil? I mean, you hear a lot of Mexico and Colombia and all that. I, you hear, you're hearing a lot about Mexico right now. What are, yeah. you, seeing, what are you seeing on the, for the rest of Latin America? Yeah, I think, I mean, when, I, when we look at Latin America since we started, Brazil was always a natural focus for us because of the attraction, the reputation, the credibility on multi-plan in the country. Sure. So we got a lot of traction with Brazilians for that reason and the beautiful product we have. And, and, and Max was always a second, it was a second consumer group for us. We see that, I mean, the political uh, climate in Mexico is a concern of the high net worth individuals. It's the proximity to the U.S., so Miami is, is, is an easy way out, right? It's still quite connected to Mexico. Sure. Uh, we, we already have, like, a significant Mexican community here in, in, in Florida, uh, in South Florida, uh, mostly in Surfside, Bull Harbor, and, 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 and so we're, the proximity that we have and the value proposition we have and, and the flexibility for plans we have, we all saw a good product market fit for that demographics. Uh, so I, I see it with very positive uh, uh, view on, on the Mexico market. We've been traveling a lot to Mexico, you know, every other sure. month. We're here for presentations and, 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 and in building those relationships with uh, uh, key broker groups there. Yep. In, in, in planning events together, in, in facilitating the sales process and have a firm commitment, you know, with that market since the beginning. I think the other, the other countries, it's, it's challenging because I think the U.S. is quite expensive at the same time. So we, we, we see Argentina, you know, went from a major crisis. So when, when it really hit after the election, we saw some demand. Chile, which one never thought would Correct. run, go into major disruption. And it did for the first time ever. was never anticipated. So 
we've been seeing a lot of growing interest from Chile in, in trying to understand the market, in trying to get the grab on, on the market here, where to position different product types. And, and, and so we think we, Latin America, we always see Miami as a hub, no matter what. I mean, might be limiting for some individuals because of the, uh, the, the current economic conditions, but for high net worth individuals, they, they, they are a little bit less dependent, right? They, they are more inelastic, you know, about those prices because for the most part, a lot of that, that capital or a lot of that net worth is already placed outside of the countries to hedge against that exposure. So, Interesting. Uh, and, and the crisis is always a moment of opportunity who has the liquidity can really capture on those opportunities. And I think is be always like the other side of the, the coin. Yeah, right? Absolutely. The cash is, it's funny. Everybody said, you know, coming into coronavirus, they said, if you had cash in the bank, you were, it was wrong. You're, you're losing yeah. money by keeping it in the bank. And now the whole mantra is cash is king to capitalize on the opportunity. So you could never, exactly. you could almost never get it right. Now, you know, one of the things I've read a lot about 57 Ocean in particular, because um, we're talking a lot about Latin America and in particular Brazil and Mexico, let's talk domestic because one of the successes, big successes that you've had at 57 Ocean is the demand from domestic buyers, particularly in, the, in, in your bigger units, right? Um, right? And because of coronavirus, the New York Times even said that my, South Florida was the number two destination uh, of New Yorkers or, or Northeasterners in terms of them forwarding their addresses to South Florida, uh, which is interesting data, right? Um, how do you foresee the domestic market playing uh, a role, the domestic outside of Miami, coming to Miami, playing a role in South Florida real estate, not only for 57 Ocean, um, but for the general real estate market as a, as a whole? Right, right. I think, I mean, any developer in South Florida uh, develop the, the high-end luxury properties have to target New York, right? And the main fundamental reason up to that point was the tax benefit, right? The tax implications for someone, a net worth individual moving to Florida and establishing residency here. Uh, even if it's not happening today, if that happens in the near future, so they have to plan for that. So we created that opportunity for them to stay here in a product that is in a part of what they would be buying in New York, right? Sure. The level of property they were trying to develop here would provide them the level of service, the level of amenities that uh, an affluent individual would require to feel comfortable. And, and I think Miami, the larger Miami, has uh, upgraded or elevated itself to provide also the other aspects for someone moving down here in terms of culture, arts, entertainment, food. I mean, Miami is part of this larger cultural global sure. scene today which makes it very appealing for someone not move here because of taxes, but because Miami is an active, vibrant, and, and, and the metropo uh, global city. And I think uh, as we go through this crisis, everyone is looking inwards and trying to understand what kind of lifestyle they're living. And that's where Florida has an amazing opportunity to emerge out of these uh, event as the health destination in the US, right? Sure. I think no other part of the U.S. enjoys the, the weather and that climate all year long and, and, and the opportunity to be outdoors, uh, the lifestyle, the beaches, the parks. I mean, there's so much to do beyond being confined on your unit if you are in a large urban city like New York, Chicago, Washington, and those right. places. So I think... And that's where I see the opportunity, you know, that I, I feel very optimistic about. And we start to see that. I mean, we sold during the crisis, even selling remotely, you know, trying to use all the technology tools to, to sure. support us. Uh, we've been, like, really been bombarded by inquiries from New York. We already see people coming here to look and, 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 and really... Uh, anticipate that decision if someone was in the fence and trying to think. And the other thing, before I forget, Alex, is that look at us now. We're doing a Zoom. Uh, and, and for the most people, this has become uh, an opportunity to try out and, and, and rethink the way they work. So if someone, Miami Tech is very close to New York, have flights every hour. It's, it's just three hours away, so it's always easy to be part of the East Coast, same time zone. Yeah. And now people might reflect they don't need to be in New York every week. You know, they can be every other week. They can be once a month. 
So it's not as complicated to move to Florida and continue on running your business in New York because you had that experience and it might have been brutal in the beginning, but you got used to it and you don't think it's as bad as it was before we went on that mode. So, yeah, that's a good point. You know, you you mentioned Miami being a major metropolitan city. I don't think people realize just how big that is. I was doing research and the, the way they rank it is New York is the, the, the large, it's in terms of metropolitan areas, it's New York, LA, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Washington, DC, and then Miami. Yeah. And I mean, so think about that. We're comparing Miami is now being thrown into the conversation with cities like New York and LA and Chicago. And, and the separation between New York and Miami isn't as big as people, as people think. And, and so yeah. Miami yeah. definitely is, is the, one of the premier cities in, in the entire country, yeah. not only from the weather, but, but just in, even in size. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now you guys picked Miami beach. I mean, you could have gone, you could have gone anywhere, right? You could have probably gone to Fort Lauderdale. You could have gone to Brickell. You could have gone to downtown. You could have gone up to Surfside. You could have gone up to Bell Harbor, Sunny yeah. Isles even. What was it about where you guys are on 57th and, and Collins to, to really want to go there? What, what is it about Miami beach that attracted you guys? I think as a developer, we, we like to say, I mean, when you look, the square footage, there's, it's, there's unlimited square footage in Miami where you can develop. But when you're talking about the beach, there is limited linear footage. You know, every stretch of that beach is already occupied. There's not any opportunity, like straightforward opportunity for you to come here and try to develop anything on South Beach. Or, or Miami Beach or Mid Beach. It's just rare, it's just unique, it's scarce. And I think that's what drives the value of your product. So for us, I mean, every opportunity we would have to develop something as unique as Deep Seven Ocean, which is very hard to replicate, that automatically creates a defensive barrier in that market for you because you won't have tomorrow anyone developing like a similar building right next door to you as that can happen at water in downtown, in Wynwood, because right. there are opportunities, more opportunities, you know, and, and then becomes a race and, and, and that competition can be predatory uh, in a way for you to sustain value. And, and I'm a believer that every time they have an opportunity to create that supply, that unique supply, the limited inventory, uh, you drive demand, you know, you don't put yourself in the same basket as, as, the, as the overall condo market you, sure. because you cannot put yourself in the basket of the many, maybe 10 different projects in Surfside, you know, or, or in, in, in Sunny Isles, right? right? It's a different market. I mean, there's nothing as a direct competition. I mean, there is direct competition from the buildings adjacent to you, but it's a totally different lifestyle proposition, you know? They are not up to date on what can you develop for the contemporary world in terms of the services and amenities. So, and that's where we see value. That's where we see the opportunity. That's where we think we can differentiate ourselves by delivering on that value proposition and being successful on, on the end product once creating that market or creating that strong demand for that product. So talk to us, you know, talk to us about 57 Ocean. I, I actually haven't been able to go there yet and I hope I'll be able to get in there soon. Um, talk to us about 57 Ocean. I, I mean, one of the, I love detail and just the, the, I'm telling you, there's, to me, if I could, if I could paint my house white, have a brown roof, brown trim and have under my overhang, have the, the wood, the way you have it. It's like, you know, that's the Brazilian home. Right. Um, yeah. and I could see, I just, I love it. I, I'm, I'm Brazilian by second nature at this point. Um, yeah. I've been with my yeah. wife so long. Yeah. Talk to me about 57 Ocean. What makes it so special? Yeah. Well, I think in 57 Ocean, it starts with location, right? In real estate, location, location, location. I mean, the mantra that we all know, and I think we are in Millionaire's Grow, which is one of the most well-established, uh, reputable, traditional addresses, you know? And, Absolutely. And an opportunity for us to uh, redesign here, right? To create a new building, to become a new reference point, like a flagship in that stretch of the beach, which is a very tranquil, family-oriented, reserve it, private. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here, I mean, of course, we are under different circumstances, but when I look at this ocean ahead of me from that balcony, it's, it's a private beach, you know? It almost feels like in this secluded resort. And that resort life, that connectivity to the nature and, and the weather enables that all year long, that's what was the vision for 57 Ocean, to, to really promote a different lifestyle, wellness lifestyle, to enable 
residents to connect to the nature, I mean, that ocean, that beach, that board wall, and, and bring that nature inside the building. And, and you touched like an interesting point, the attention to details and the natural elements. Sure. I mean, we did something unique uh, uh, when you look at the, the, the residences throughout the building, no matter in which line you are, uh, face east, face west, you, we have 12 feet deep balconies wrapping up the whole building. Wow. Which is amazing, right? You don't. Uh, outdoor, outdoor space has never been more important than right now. So that, that's a I mean, you were doing it before, but now it, it creates that much more value right now, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's an extension of your home and you're framing those those balconies with wood ceilings, which is also uh, new to, to that market, you know, to, to go that extra mile to almost create that intimate uh, 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 dimension, right? It's, it's, it's almost like a vertical housing, right? You're bringing those elements that make it uh, frame the residence and, and make that seamless connection between the indoor and outdoor spaces throughout all residences. And I think that's a distinguishing feature that's whenever it, that's why I really wanted to, to, to talk to you from here to show you you know I mean it, it's walk the talk now as I'm sitting here you know it's almost in my living room you're facing the ocean and just like we frame it by this beautiful wood ceiling where do you have that you know not many places sure. will, will be able to provide that atmosphere and 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 I think the whole programming, when you look at our amenities, the way we design them, you know, we have one single elevation, the whole building. So no matter where you are in that main ground floor amenity deck, you see the ocean, right? When you enter the Port Cochier, you walk through the lobby, you see the ocean as wow. your background. So the connectivity, you know, we felt was very important to really uh, drive the lifestyle for the building to to entertain and entice people to be outdoors, to have a more healthful living lifestyle while in 57 Ocean. Absolutely. Now, where can they find more information about the project, Marcelo? Uh, 57ocean.com is the website? 57ocean.com. And I would really invite everyone, uh, for any interest, uh, if you enjoy design, just come. If you like real estate, come to see what you're developing here. If you're just curious, if you like a neighborhood and want to see what's happening, how we're changing the neighborhood, we invite you to come to our sales center. We are at 5775 Collins. We're open every day. Uh, right now, we're open by appointments, but you can sure. call your website and set up an appointment. We're trying to take precaution, of course, uh, to limit it, the visitation, enforce social distance, but with all the health procedures in place to allow you to have a comfortable visit and see, because it's, it's a beautiful center, I like to say, Alex, we, I think we did something unique that was never done before. We built a two-story sales center so that on the second floor, we could stage a full model unit and replicate the balcony and have an opportunity to show our views, not the, the real view, because it's not at that elevation, much higher elevation. But even from here, you already have a sense of what it feels to wake up every morning and look at the beach ahead of you and, and, and see the activity, people the boardwalk, you know, people going to the beach and, and this whole atmosphere that's really energizing and that has become a very strong selling factor. No better way to showcase your product, no better way to explain your vision as bringing people here to live it, to experiment okay. it. And well, and when that happens, you get, there's this thing called endowment effect. And endowment effect is when you take ownership of something before you actually own it. I'm sorry, endowment, yeah, exactly. Or you place a higher value on something uh, once you own it versus something you don't. And by yeah, creating yeah. that environment, they're already taking ownership even though they, they don't yeah. own it. That's, I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. Yeah, now, yeah. Marcelo, we wrap up every interview with a book, podcast, or TED Talk recommendation for the audience. So if you could pick one or all three, go for it. What's a good recommendation for our audience? Well, I think in the book, I mean, like two books I'd like to recommend, that's you know, one of them is The Blue Mind, which was a, a book that was really uh, when we started that journey in trying to, to create that vision, to create that brand, and to create that, uh, uh, that's a, Aura for for Fifth Seven Ocean that was an inspiration. You know, it talks about the impact that the ocean, that the water have on individuals, right? I think we 
we, we have to remember that we all came from the water, right? 90% of our body is water. Yeah. And sometimes it's not as, uh, we don't realize how much water have an impact on our lives in, in how much uh, the sound of the water, just dive in the water, exercise in the water, walking by the water, how much benefit, uh, health, psychological, and, and, and mindfulness that can bring to an individual and to a human being. So it's a very, uh, uh, it's a little rough sometimes because there's a lot of background research sure. to prove benefits to provide the, the background support. But it's a very interesting insight on the benefits of the water on the well-being. And I think under the current circumstances as wellness has become way much more important for people to, to, uh, to change their lifestyle, to, to bring more healthy, habits to them i think is an interesting read and the um, so it's called the blue mind blue mind yeah i love it awesome yeah. marcelo thank you so much my friend i appreciate our time together um and again for people to learn more 57 ocean we'll put it in the comments when we air this thank you again for my uh for your time my friend i appreciate it no thank you alex uh welcome uh, to come here and visit us too and and looking forward to see you and thank you very much it would be an honor thank you all right bye